Well, hello everybody. Another three-point edit, uh, so pseudo tutorial this time. This time I'm rising to the challenge presented by Campbell on the latest Blender podcast, or at, le at least it was the latest blog podcast uh, in December, which it probably isn't now that you're listening to this uh, later in 2013. Anyway, um, what the guys were recording on was Audacity. Here we go. Audacity um, Openware uh, Audio Recorder Multiplatform. And uh, this is the recorder that I, I used a little bit earlier to record uh, my voice um, for a little test sample sequence of audio, which I could have trimmed up in the timeline here. Uh, however, look at this wonderful tool up here. It indicates level. This is something that Blender f actually doesn't possess, a VU meter or levels meter, which would be wonderful, uh, at least for mixing, if not for recording. Wouldn't be great to have some of the functionality and Audacity in Blender. Anyway, in, a, in addition to using Audacity, um, I've loaded up another add-on called the Extra Sequences Actions uh, add-on uh, for 2.6. It's a wonderful script uh, and it's a rare script in that it works exclusively in the VSC. It's terrific. It has all these terrific options for ripple delete so that when you cut something out it will close the gap and pull everything down to the right of the uh, of the playhead or the place that was deleted. Um, you can fade uh, your clips so that they get a, your audio kit clips get an automatic fade at the beginning and the end. It's terrific for getting rid of that harsh clipping sound. Uh, there's all sorts of uh, neat uh, features in here, too many to, num to name really, um, but very, very useful. Um, and be wonderful if they were rolled into the, the VSE's call functionality. Anyway, getting on to Blender. I've set up a timeline in the VSE with a couple of elements. I have, I'll just move this out of the way and this out of the way. At the start, I've made a a color effect which is effectively there to just block the uh, subsequent clips because I'm going to use a piece of audio media at the start here and um, the audio media is a piece of music like a music intro and it has a dip um, built into it so I'll highlight that come over to my f-curve editor here press the home button to zoom and here is my f-curve my keyframe values so the music plays along up here at this point descends down to 20% of um, level. Of course you can't see any of the level here and it's a bit hard to gauge how loud it is. But let me play that through for you. Hit play. And you can see that it tapers out to zero there nice and quiet. So at the point where it begins to fade here I've put this color effect. So that means that I can butt my, my audio track that I recorded earlier and imported up to here. If I drag that and let go it snaps up against it here. And now when I play the music So there's my audio and I've expanded the track so that I'm only looking at the audio that I want to edit and I have selected, here it is, draw waveform. I can turn that off and on. The waveform I guess notionally would be normalized to go to zero at the top although I'm not really sure. I haven't put in zero tone to find out. Um, it would be nice to know what these values were for the waveform. Um, but generally audio would average quite a bit lower than zero anyway and we haven't I haven't normalized any of my source however the music that I have imported is normalized I'm expecting and its waveform does in fact peak at the top of the track uh, but we don't have any tools for this in in blender as it stands at the moment although we do have some um, uh, gain obviously gain effect a pitch effect is which is very helpful for s speeding up or slowing down tracks to fit or fill and uh, also to change the um, uh, change the uh, pitch or nature of the, a voice for disguising or whatever else you might want to do. It's quite f fun. Anyway, what the other thing I've done here is lock these tracks. So I've come down to edit strip and I've applied the lock. You see it get grayed out there. 
and the same at the start because I imagine these things wouldn't change the intro of the um, of the music likewise the outro music over here whilst I haven't locked it because if I did that I wouldn't be able to click and drag it what I've done is I have locked if I come over here and press home in the F curve editor I've locked the the curve so that I can't accidentally uh, add or add more keyframes so now it has a fade up and fade out built in I'll play that So this is an element I can drag around and put anywhere in the program and you know, I would probably have other bumper elements to break up into views and things like that throughout as well. Uh, I could even reprise this element I guess. And now back to editing the uh, clip. So I've left this as an overview window at the top which is just a duplicate of this timeline below. Um, I can resize this and what have you. But hopefully if I play this through I should be able to cut and shut and change anything I want here without affecting the music below it. So let's play through. Testing, testing. Well, this is a particularly bad recording from Audacity because uh, I have a very cheap uh, microphone. So let's get rid of the testing, testing at the front. So I'll just zoom into there. Testing, testing. Now what I can do is I can perform a cut, cut that, highlight this track or this uh, element of the strip. If I come down here to strip, one of the features for the um, sequenced uh, extra add-on is a ripple delete. And when I do that, it should lift that section out and move everything behind. And you can see that this clip and everything behind it moved along. Of course, not these clips because, well, they weren't after it and also they're locked. But you can see from this little bit of, whoops, blue down here that there is a soft trim or a soft cut in place and it's moved to close the holes. If I play that now Well this is a particularly bad recording from Audacity because uh, I have a very cheap uh, microphone on my headset. Anyway, I guess this is a good example of some uh, fault filled audio recording and here is the beginning of any podcast and this is a good See, what else can I lose from here to close up that hole? Cut that, press cut, highlight the next clip, play. Fault filled audio recording. And here's the beginning of, of some example of some beginning of any podcast. And uh, I guess now it's a fault filled. Small trim, so let's cut that. Whoops. Cut that. Highlight the clip, and again we'll go down to strip. Whoops, strip and ripple delete again I guess this is a good example of some fault filled audio recording I'll trim that, play that <coughs> and here's the beginning and here. cut that again, highlight the, trip, the strip that I want to lose now having applied this to a key I guess I could um, make this a shortcut key it would make it a lot more quick uh, to edit things Uh, in other editing packages what you can do is actually apply an in point and then an out point and then press a lift. Uh, in fact I think jump to cut another add-on which I don't think I have installed at the moment um, was able to do that as a lift function so that would be nice maybe using markers beginning and end marker um, and then lifting a region um, perhaps another um, scripting task that could be undertaken by Python guru that I'm not. <laughs> So we might cut out there, lose the rest of that, and will we delete? I'll delete that. And I might apply. Oh, it's uh, over to you. No, it's back to me. To 
just stretch that out a little bit. One other nice. One other nice feature is the fade effect. So, oh, ignoring my Twitter response there, sorry. Uh, one other nice effect we have is strip uh, fade. So we can go fade out for this. Fade out, make a short um, four frame fade out, and press OK. Oh, an error. There might already be. There might be a conflict there with uh, previous keyframes or non-existent keyframes. What if I put a keyframe in there? Oh, look at this. If I clear keyframes, hmm, doesn't want to allow me to clear the keyframe. Ah, locked keyframe. That's odd. Let me unlock that. Clear that keyframe. I wonder what they did to the other ones. Let's go try fade again. Fade out. Three frames. OK. Press home. See what that's done. And there's a fade short fade on the end there. I wonder if that's affected any of the other... I don't think that... Well, might put a fade in at the start there. Let's go fade in. No, and that also has a baked in fade. So this is... it's a property that's been carried on from the first at version of this clip, so I'll unlock that as well. Clear the keyframe. And I'll go back to... whoops strip, fade effect, fade in, three frames, OK. Then we drag our outro music. I'll have to press home, have a look where the fade occurs. This is a bit of a drawback with the VSE is that you can't apply markers to clips to indicate where um, keyframes might be. So I can't really know where on this clip my fade up occurs, all I can do is drag it backwards and forwards and hope that it's there somewhere. It would be really nice to be able to add markers or um, sync like I have here with the, or the uh, color effect to um, to the audio effect so that it bridges more than one track. Certainly you could do that with a meta strip but then the, the aim is to um, have another indicator on another track uh, where something is happening. I could split this track I guess and cut it but then I'd have two tracks that I would have to um, uh, look after and drag around the timeline. Uh, I could do that I suppose. Let's say I want my fade up audio to start there. I could press cut, highlight both of those. Whoops. Highlight both of the... dear, what have I done? Highlight both of those and wherever the cut effect occurs is where the fade is. So play us play. And that's the end of the audio. Make end there. Let's change back to properties, 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 properties. Change to scene tab. Go down to mix down, audio, update the animation cache to make sure everything's all keyframes are being respected. Go to mix down and send the file out as a flak apparently. Although I think, oh here we go, you can choose what kind of file you want to make it. Waveform, etc. Should leave all that pretty much as is and uh, save it out. I won't do that now. Anyway, um, quick example of how to do um, podcast editing in the VSE uh, with a bit of difficulty. I would really like um, a, a uh, levels indicator in the VSE. I think that would probably just about get you over the line for balancing all your levels up without having to do it by ear. Uh, that would be a wonderful thing. Anyway, thanks very much for listening and I hope Campbell gets to see this. Thanks very much. And guys, great podcast. Blender podcast. Awesome. Bye.